Really cool call tonight. Again, I had something planned on the agenda for follow-up, and I initially had one caller come in and then another caller as well. And so the two of us uh, just had an open dialogue conversation around following up, but more specifically, uh, one of the girls, Julie Danielson, uh, had it done an event where she was at a trade show and she had a table there and had gotten 35 leads and had some challenges around following up with them and just understanding the process and how much she should do it and when is enough enough and um, then making the most of these mini sessions that she called them that she was offering. So it kind of helped clarify that quite a bit and we really got deep into uh, the following up process and just uh, this really call is going to help you really understand um, our mindset as a business person and our objective in following up with these people and engaging people, but it really highlights the qualification process for us to be able to qualify these potential clients uh, for our time and for us to better understand where they are and if it's appropriate or not to offer them a complimentary session or not and then where to go from there. So uh, it really will benefit you to listen to it. Um, it's very real world, especially because not only um, is what I talk about my experience over the last 11 plus years as a coach um, in dealing with this firsthand, but also it's um, you know a couple people who are, are going through this process now, just like you, who are sharing you know their challenges and also their insights as they uh, hear and respond to uh, what I'm teaching them. Oh, and before we get started, a quick update. One of the mini sessions that Julie talks about here that she had scheduled, she had had that session after our call the following day, and she messaged me actually just today letting me know that the person she met with had hired her and is now a paying client. So really, really cool to see uh, her talking about this and you know what she's going through as you'll hear her through the call and uh, how she was able to apply not only just her own knowledge and also the, some of the things that we learned here. So... Uh, this stuff works, and uh, congratulations, Julie. So here's where I am. I walked away with from that event with like 35 names, leads, basically. Yeah. And I've been calling down the list. I've left messages. I've um, emailed them. There's several. I don't know if their handwriting was so bad that. I got the wrong email, but I mean, I'm, I'm sending personal emails to each and every one of them because when I talk to them, I would take, I would jot down a quick note to myself and I would like send them a personal email and say, hey, I know you really wanted to talk to me um, about that one issue. Um, when's a good time? Here's a link to my calendar. Feel free to either go there and book it now or give me a call and we'll schedule it. Um, I've got like two appointments this week scheduled out of that, and so far that's it. And when I have this one-on-one -on -one appointment with them, you know, I guess that's the other thing is where do I go with that? Because that's what I was giving away was um, like a free mini session. Like how can I really use it to lock them in to want to work with me? When you're at an event like that, Julie, when we're giving away something, they put their name in the hat for a reason, like I said, and your job now is to find out, okay, why did they do that? So that's, that's the number one thing. You've been calling. You've been emailing. Um, you said you kind of froze up a little bit um, initially. One of the first things we always want to um, get with follow-up is we've got to do it while it's hot. There's two main things when it comes to selling, and it's need and timing. So it's the need of the prospect, meaning, and everybody out there has a need for something. They want to get better at something. They want to do more, et cetera. The other piece to it is the timing, though. So the t if the timing's not right, it doesn't matter how big my need is, the timing's not right. And the timing could be not be right for many, many reasons. But it's our job now to find out, well, what is that need? Well, first off, what was the motivation for this person, you know, kind of saying, yes, I want this mini session? That goes back into finding more about their need, why that's so important to them, and then why right now, All right? So the right now piece is why I'm going off of the timing of the follow-up has to be like ASAP. 
And I know you're, you're in my private Facebook group, the Selling Coaching Facebook group on Facebook. And um, I remember, I remember at the, when we posted that you were doing this event, remember that? And I yeah. kind of gave you some tips on there. And I yeah. said, I, I'm pretty sure I said, I'm like, make sure you follow up with these people. Like, even like at the event, if there's like a lull or no one's at your table, right. like email them right then and there. So our timeliness, whenever we get a lead, and a lead could be like just like this. And remember, we don't really right. know if it's a, a, a true hot lead yet or if it's just a name. Mm -hmm. So whether mm -hmm. it's a, at an event like this or whether it's a, a, an email from your website, a new like a, some, a like on your Facebook page, it could be a testimonial or a comment in a blog like the call I did last week with Corey. Any of those things okay. could be potential leads. So whenever that's done, mm -hmm. Our urgency of follow-up is like yesterday. So mm -hmm. as close to like that time when you get that comes in or you get that, we want to follow up with right. that person. So at that event, and you can't go back and undo this, and had you followed up like even at the event during like a lull time, um, would your results be any different? Maybe, but if you might have gotten maybe a couple more responses. It, honestly, mm -hmm. it all depends on, you know, really how hot they were, how interested they were to begin with. Um, right. But in general, the, the quicker you are, if anything, um, it impresses people because most people's response time now is a lot mm -hmm. slower, right? And, and so we right. want to be very responsive because I can't tell you, like, especially when I'm really on top of stuff and I get back to people, like, immediately, the the response I always get is like, wow, I can't believe you got back to me so quickly. Because people assume that we're busy. People assume that we're doing things. And we are. We've got a lot going on. But stuff like this is we're on top of. So that's just a tip right there. Um, okay. and, and, that's, and that also goes back in terms of understanding why we do that is not just to impress people, but it goes back to the timing and the need. So that when someone raises their hand, it's hard enough for someone to admit that they're challenged with something or they want to improve something, isn't it? So mm -hmm. when, when I finally get to the place of like actually raising my hand and putting my name in the bowl or emailing someone or doing something like that, I've come to a point in my life where I've decided or something's happened that I need to make a change or I want to do something about it. That, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It means the timing is now, right? And so right. we have to remember so these people go to this event, for instance, that you were at, and they, they're talking to people, and they're like, oh, I, they went there for a reason. They wanted to, like, what was the, what was the event about for women? Um, it's just a women's uh, show. It's the Alaska Women's Show, and there's vendors that um, do things for women. So all kinds of things. There are chiropractors and healthcare of all kinds and I mean, just everything. Exactly. So, so I, I'm, a, I'm a woman. I'm a mom. I'm a working mom. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm a, I'm a woman, and right, I've got burdens, right. and I've got stress, and I, I'm taking time out of my life to get away from all that, and I'm going to go by myself or with my friends, and I'm going to just look for things that can help heal me and help me feel good about myself again, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're there for a reason. And so now they're starting to maybe see some hope, and they've talked to a few people, and they're feeling good, and then they see this awesome girl, Julie, and, oh, my God, what do you have? And you work with women, and you know what? They put their hat in the bowl. So they, something's going on at, at that time. And so, so that's, again, that's the essence of it. It's hard enough for them to actually do that. But you have to remember, right. now what happens is after the event, where do they go? Mm -hmm. Where do they go? They go back to it. Back to it. Back and then, it is. Yeah. yeah, and what happens to that door of hope? It's slammed in their face, right? <laughs> and they go home to their whatever, their husband or their, you know, the situation, and the kids are throwing right. up on them, or they get a change of poopy diaper, or they've right. got a, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, it's just like, I'm right back where I was four hours ago. And so, doesn't mean that that can't change, but the longer they stay there, um, again, they lose that, uh, that, that impetus, that motivation. Um, they're either really already there, and the, also the piece about this is that if we wait too long and they're really serious, when people are serious and they've decided that they're going to do something, 
they're going to seek out something. And if, if a coach or something along that avenue is, is in their sights, and right. you're not, let's say, the one getting back to them, and it could be a day, mm -hmm. they, could, they could have gone home, gone online, found um, Susan, right, and, mm -hmm. and hired Susan in Chicago. And, um, and that's it. So just a couple pieces around that, right? Okay. So, and that's just for tips for everybody, is just understanding, like, why the urgency of follow-up and also understanding, you know, the psychology, if you will, of, and we all get it when I talk about it, not, not that you didn't understand this, but it's also, it gives us insight into, you know, what this person's going through and what we want to be able to understand from them. So, okay. um, so your main question was, is kind of like, why don't you rephrase that now, so you been calling and emailing them. You've got a couple of responses. Right. So, um, like, at what point am I beating a dead horse? You know, I've left messages. I may have emailed some people. Um, I mean, I just off the bat, I emailed about 15 personal emails the other day, and 10 of them were incorrect email addresses. And it's like, how... Well, it wasn't that many. It was more like that maybe. How could that many be incorrect? Is all the handwriting that bad? And um, were they putting their name in the hat and, like, putting down fake email addresses? I mean, I just don't understand. Or were they really just bad handwriting? So I tried calling and, you know, working them from that angle, but I'm not getting the call back. Okay. Yeah, so so a lot of a lot of wrapped up in that. So let's not focus too much on like whether it's a they wrote a fake email address or something like that. I mean, it's right. it's not entirely impossible that someone would because people are afraid to say no. So when you're at an event and you're engaging with somebody, especially live, and you kind of bring up, hey, you know, I've got this free or I've got this you know quick startup session or, or um, what what I forget what you called it. Um, but, but either way, and you're talking to them about it, sometimes people feel pressured. And you're not trying to pressure them. You're just making them aware of it. But some people will just be like, yeah, okay. And maybe they would write something fake down. You know? So that's why, you know, as we talk to people and you know, we start to understand why they're doing those things. Um, and then also as we take, there's different ways of taking people's information down. Um, if I'm going to do anything at an event now, um, I'm a big advocate of not having business cards, and I'm a big advocate of not having anything where they write. Um, if they write something, I will write it, and they will tell it to me, mm -hmm. um, and I will confirm with them that this is correct, um, or mm -hmm. I will just get out my good old smartphone that everybody has, and I say, great, mm -hmm. what's the best way to contact you? Text, email, et cetera. And whatever they tell me, I get the other version as well. So they're like, oh, can I just text you now? Great. What's your email as well? I want to put it in there. And I'll either just <laughs> give them my phone and say, type it in, or I will type it in and spell it, and then I will show them. Does this look correct? Awesome. Listen, I'm going to actually right. text you right now. And when, I, when you get that, just reply back to me, and you'll have my information, and I'll have yours. So just a little couple ways of doing that. If, you don't, if they're not correct right now, don't sweat it. Just, you just got to right. go with what you have. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's that piece right there. Um, in, in terms of like beating a dead horse, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> here's, this is the important part. Is like how, how long do we follow up for, right? We've right. got to – all you have to go off in this situation, and then – and I'll apply this to other lead situations as well um, where people are, let's say – raising their hand to inquire about something. So this wouldn't be like, you know, a, a blog comment or something like that. This is where, like, maybe you're speaking at an event and they raise their hand to ask for more or at an event like this where people are putting something in the hat saying, yes, I want something. Um, to understand this. Your follow-up, if you, if you go under the pretenses of you requested something from me, I'm following up on your request. That's the whole premise of follow-up. Because I'm not making it about me. It's not, I want to give you this. I want to do this mm -hmm. with you. 
I'm saying, well, you said yes. Whether you lied to me or not, I just have to trust that you didn't, <laughs> and I'm following up on your request. So what I would do is, is um, now that you've done your initial follow-up once or twice even at that point, um, mm -hmm. at that point I would follow up and I would phrase it something like this. And I'm going to give you this. This is not like, oh, try this out. I use this all the time, and it works, <laughs> right? And, and here's how it, something like this. It goes, um, hey, just want to check up back in with you. Haven't heard back from you. Um, I sent you a couple emails and I called, or kind of like a paraphrase what you've already done with them, and I haven't heard back from you. Um, I respect that you're quite busy. You know, you could say, I, I know the feeling. Um, that I know our time is both very valuable, but I'm, I'm following up on your request. So I'm following up on your request to blah, 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 and just kind of share what that was. I'm a big advocate of following up. Um, please let me know if you're genuinely interested or not. I'm okay either way. I just would like to hear back from you. You know, thank you very much. Okay. So that's so what you're going off of is is like you're giving them permit you're saying, "Hey, I'm following up on your request. Haven't heard back from you." You're kind of playing the guilt card a little bit. Like when I write an email like this or I do a voicemail like this, I'm playing off of guilt. I'm saying, "Hey, look it. I'm following up on your request." I've called and emailed you twice. I don't have that tone, right? But that's basically what I'm saying. And, and it's like, I will follow up with you. And sometimes I'll say, like, hey, I will follow up. If I know you're genuinely interested, I will follow up with you till I bleed. I, I don't know why I just say that, right? Like on voicemails and, and even emails. Because it just it, it exaggerates <laughs> the fact that, like, listen, I am serious about what I do. And you, you asked mm -hmm. for something. And I said, if you're genuine, I love that. If you're genuinely interested... I will follow up with you till I bleed. But if you're not, mm -hmm. that's okay. I just need to hear back from you either way. I'd appreciate that. So you, you, you're trying right. to show someone that like... You're giving you, them permission. Yes, you're giving, you're giving them permission. Them permission. Now. That's exactly what we mm -hmm. want to do. And you want them to... I don't, I'm not trying to make them feel guilty in some ways, but I want them if, to realize that I'm taking the time to do this. If, if okay. they're a human, a, a human with some decency, again, I'm not judging anybody, but I'm just saying, then the average person will get back to you on that, and, and they'll say something along the lines of, oh, I mean, I'm so sorry, yes, I'm still very interested, or, yeah, you know what, I've just been super busy, now's not the right time, thank you very much. And that's what we're going for, ultimately, when, in terms of following up, and anything we do is we're ultimately going for a yes or a no. I've, I've said many times, we're a decision collector, right? So we're going for a yes or a no. Um, so use that. You can use that. Um, I would just stick with email for right now. Um, and, and then if, the, if you don't hear anything back in a few days from email, you could try one more call. And again, at this point, that would be to me the last, the last piece. Because if they're not going to get back to you with something like that, when you're like genuinely saying, hey, listen, you know what? It was great connecting with you. Put your name in this. I followed up with you several times, haven't heard back from you, and while I respect that you know you got a lot going on, um, I'm just following up on your request, and I'd really appreciate it if you can let me know either way, if you're still interested in talking about this or you're just not interested at all. Please get back to me, a simple, quick email with, hey, you know what, doesn't work out for me right now, anything like that. And you're, you're almost mm -hmm. pleading with them and just showing them that you care and that you're following up on their request. So that's mm -hmm. kind of like that the, you know, so you're not beating your head against the wall. And, and you'll, get, you'll get some responses, and st some people still won't respond because some people just don't do that. They just hide in the back. They're too scared. They, they just don't want to engage, and that's fine. You just got to keep moving on. Um, at the end of the day, when you're doing something like that, like at, um, at, a, at a, a health fair or any type of affair where you have a table, um, you know, like I've done that quite a bit in the past, and you know, mm -hmm. I, you'll def I've definitely got some really good. I've gotten a handful of long-term clients from like a handful of events, so it was, it was definitely worth it. 
but it's just really mm-hmm. finding those people. And a lot of those people, you have to remember, they go to these events and they walk out of there with just a billion business cards and a billion pamphlets and a billion free little whatevers, and most right. of it just goes right in the trash. And then the list of attendees, if that goes out to all the tables and all the vendors who you know paid to get there, people are basically, you know, they don't do email the right way, and they just take the whole list and they upload it to their email and they just start spamming these people. So the reality is, is those people are probably just, they're like, who the heck is Julie? I, I don't remember this, or they're not, they're just deleting it or whatever. Um, unfortunately, that's just the reality of that. So mm-hmm. I think the biggest thing for you is, is you obviously care. We care as coaches, and you spent time with these people. I'm sure you, with each of those people, you're at the most of them, you spent a lot of time talking to them and getting to know them a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously you're excited, and you, and you spent your whole day, and you, know, you spent money to be there as well. So um, right. you have a lot invested in this. And so you're, you know, it's like, well, I just, I want to I wanna find out these people. But, you know, if you've got a couple people that have responded, put your time into them. And, and at this point, invest your time in qualifying them. That leads to this point that you've got these people responded. And you're like, now you've got this quick, like, mini session going to be scheduled with them. Um, and you're like, well, how do I best use that time? And so to make it not just about these mini sessions, but... You know, what do we do once a lead kind of responds back to us, right? Because that's essentially what's right. happened is, is they've shown some interest and, and you're scheduling what we would call mini session with them. And what's your objective or, or what, what is this supposed to be a mini session for? Like what's their impression of it? Uh, I don't know that they really have one. Okay. Um, they really don't. I mean, we talked for a moment. They put their name in the in the jar and they don't – they – think they're going to find out a little bit more about coaching, I think. Okay, it. perfect. So all, all that is and all we would do with a lead where someone were engaging with somebody is mm-hmm. um, think of it as like a, a mini qualification call. Mm-hmm. And it's, so your job now is, uh, number one, to make sure that they show up for the call. So um, I would... I would send them two questions. And I think we, we had a dialogue last week, right, where I gave you those mm-hmm. two questions? I think I thought there were four. Yeah, there were four I when you do it. a complimentary call. But the two questions I would ask someone okay. when, when they show some interest, okay. I would mm-hmm. ask them, hey, what you, you know, we've got a, a quick – quantify the call, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. And I would put you know, 15 to 30 minutes aside for the call, mm-hmm. you know, on whatever time. It, and before then, please answer these two questions so I get a better idea of what we can talk about on the call. And the two questions would be, what's your motivation for wanting this call? What do you hope mm-hmm. to achieve by the end? Mm-hmm. So number one, I'm looking for, you know, does this person respond? Number one, yes, great, I'm looking forward to the call. And either in that same email or another email before the call, answer those questions. Again, that's, these are just clues of people following instructions, showing engagement. That means engagement shows interest, mm-hmm. taking the time to mm-hmm. answer a couple of quick questions. They also, um, I, I did a call last week on how to blo- turn a blog comment into a paying client. Um, uh, Corey gave some great feedback when I gave her questions like this. Right away, her impression was, and this is before she hired me, her impression was, wow, this is serious. Or, wow, this, this person's serious about what they're doing. And their really intent is to help me and understand me. So that was just a quick impression there. Um, so with those questions, your idea is to find out, you know, exactly what they're saying. You know, basically, what's their motivation? Why do they want to talk to you? And what they're looking to achieve by, uh, by the end. So if they're very vague, like, oh, yeah, well, I just, you know, I saw that you had a free thing or blah, blah, blah. And I, so I thought I would just say, hey, what the heck? can't hurt to talk to somebody, you know, what do we hope to achieve by the end? Uh, I really don't know, you know, if it's mm-hmm. kind of vague along those lines, okay, well, doesn't mean it can't turn into something, but we just got to find out, okay. you know, more of what's, what's going on in their world. 
you know, if they can answer those, oh, God, my motivation was this, I'm going through blah, 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 here's what I hope to achieve, they may not say straight out, like, oh, I want to talk to you about hiring you as a coach, but at that point, they should be saying, you know, I want to, I want to figure out how to, might be self-focused, and, and I would want it to be self-focused, like, yeah, I want to figure out what I can do about this, because I'm stuck, or I hate it, or I'm, I'm feeling bad about it, and I want to make a change. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- these mini calls would be these mini sessions would be your job to kind of connect with them, find out them mm-hmm. as a person, and then at that point, you know, tell me more about it. it. Says here, I know in your questions you answered, you said you were looking for this, or tell me more about that. Coach them a little bit, right? But mm-hmm. coach them mm-hmm. with intention uh, of finding out kind of like what is their major need, what is the timing of that need. So it sounds like you're going through X, Y, and Z. That's where you got to get to. And once you find that out, and, and, it, and they're like hot, like they're like hot to go, meaning they've got something going on and they want to do something about it now, mm-hmm. that's when, like I said, another other things that I've done is, is uh, you've got to make that transition and say, hey, you know, have you ever considered working with a coach? Mm-hmm. You know, um, part of, you know, obviously what I do is I'm a coach and I work with people just like you. Is that something you'd be interested in learning more about? Would you be interested in having a complimentary coaching session with me so we can take what we talked about today and further it, and it would not only give you a chance to you know, really start to move forward with it, but it would also give you a good chance to see how it would feel like working with me. And if at the end of that you feel like, oh, my God, this is, this is awesome, we can talk about how you can hire me and move forward. Does that sound like something you'd be interested in? So that's interesting because you go from, okay, this is just a qualifying call, and the complimentary call is actually later. Yes, because you set that up. Because they they haven't qual. How about this? They haven't qualified for a complimentary call mm-hmm. yet. Okay. A complimentary call is something I like that. That we it's it's a full on coaching session. Like it's a full on coaching session that we're giving them ahead of time, it, it, with the intent of buying. Like when I when I'm doing a complimentary coaching call with somebody, we if we get to that point, it means they've, if they, if you will, they've passed all these check marks along the way that I've kind of subconsciously thrown out to them. They don't really know there are these check marks that they're being qualified, and you know it sounds so like you know mechanical, but we've got to qualify them, and you can do it fluently and effortlessly, um, but. Now they've passed this test, if you will, and they've earned this session from you. It's like, yeah. And the only way you can really get a feel for coaching and what it really is and see the value in it is by driving the car. So we're going to drive you the car, and you're coming into this, and you're driving this car because you're telling me that you're interested in potentially buying it. So Mm -hmm. this mini session is is all about us finding, finding out those things, and then only if, you know, they're really hot and we're finding that timing and that need and they're really looking for it, then we broach into kind of the areas that I went through earlier of just, you know, are you considering working with a coach and so forth and so on, that terminology. And and that then translates in it. And, and if they're interested, I often, at that point, I will tell people and say, awesome, so you would be interested. So you would consider working with me as your coach if you saw value. Awesome. We can do a complimentary coaching call. Let me ask you. What's your motivation for doing that? Why would you want to have a co- coaching call with me? Why would you consider working with me as your coach? From what you know right now, why would you see value in that? So see, I'm fr- now I'm not, they always just said yes after I qualified them. Now I'm going to say, okay, great, why? Why would you see value? Why would you consider doing that? It's just another way of me really, you know what it really is? It's, it's mm-hmm. us valuing our time and our expertise mm-hmm. And, and what we can do with people, because this is serious shit, right? Like, and I say that right. emphatically, like we can change people's lives. We have mm-hmm. such great skill sets, and we can do things that other people can't. And so right. I, I, I like to tell people, like, take your stuff seriously. And, and can you mm-hmm. see by me asking or us asking all these questions to somebody how serious they're going to know we are about our craft and what we do and that we're not mm-hmm. just, like giving this away to people on the street, like, you know, free raffle tickets to a dance club or something. I don't know how that came out, but, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> it, it's like that's what we do. 
And so this free mini session, if you will, is no different than when someone uh, emails you or, you know, you're creating a back and forth dialogue uh, via email, Facebook, or anywhere, and you're sensing a need in timing, um, and as soon as they're starting in there engaging with you, um, that's where I call people up. I tell people, pick up the phone, call them up, and, and talk to them a little bit. And you're not trying to sell them on anything. What you do is you're qualifying them. Tell me more. You know, what's going on? What's happening in your world? Um, so how about this, Julie? All right? Last week, I called you out of the blue, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Right? So you're not my client. You're, you're on my email list. We met through the similar school. You're in my private Facebook group, and we've had some great yeah. dialogues you've shared, like, oh, I, you've been on my calls, right? So we know each other yeah. through there, and I know you enjoy my stuff. I know you're you know, growing your business, so forth and so on. Yeah. So this is, this is a great example, right? When I called you last week, mm-hmm. think about it like this. I wasn't trying – I didn't have any agenda with you other than – honestly, genuinely wanting to help you um, through the situation that you did, all right? That's why I like you, Jeffrey. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you and, know, and, I mean, seriously, it, it feels authentic and genuine, and that's definitely, it comes through with you. Good, and, that, and that's what I want to show. But, but I'll tell you this, and, and, this is some, and I'm being so very transparent, and that's why I want to be in my business very transparent because – in order for me to teach you all, I have to be transparent because there's no agenda beside this, but you have to know my thought process, right? So mm-hmm. I called you because I'm like, I just want to help this girl. And, and you said you got a lead, and, and I even forget where, how we got into it, but we spent, what, 20 minutes on the phone? And I would do this right. with anybody, you know, but it was just like, it was mm-hmm. just in the moment. I had a little open space, and I'm just like, I'm freaking calling her and talking to her. And then we had some great messages back and forth. So while I was helping you and doing all that stuff, if there had been any dialogue in there where you were like, gosh, Jeffrey, I really, um, I just really want to, I really want to move forward with this stuff, but I'm really struggling. I need some help. Or if you had, if you had given me signs like that, I might have broached the topic of, have you ever considered working with me? Have you ever considered doing something like that? I didn't go there because that wasn't my intention, but you have to know that if you gave me signs, right, if you had been saying things along that where I got the sense that you really were in that place, I mean, I know you need help, right, because you're taking my help and stuff, but I I never got the sense from you that, um, and I could be wrong, but I never got the sense from you that it was just, I didn't really get any gut I just trust my gut on what I feel with somebody, you know. Um, mm-hmm. That was just like it was the right time to make that transition and ask you about something, you know. Not that there will be ever a time per se, but if you, that's where you, when, when you do calls like that and you talk with people, go to genuinely help them. Um, but if we find that kind of feeling like, oh, they're really going through something and, and they're, they're sensing like they're reaching out, even necessarily without even saying it, that's where you've just got to trust your gut and make that transition. So I was sharing that example with you is, is that that could have been, if you will, a mini qualification call or a mini session because it was a mini session, wasn't it? Yes. And at the end of the day, the, the cool part is, is that you can walk away from that feeling, well, how did you feel walking away from that? And our interaction well, over the course. I felt like I learned something. I felt, I felt coached. I felt like I learned something. And... It, it gave me a, a direction of how to go forward with making those mini sessions and those calls. Awesome. Yeah. So and that, and that's exactly it. So at the end of the day, you want people to spin off and go away from that being kind of like a fan of yours. And I'm not trying to make mm-hmm. you a fan, but you know what I'm saying. Like when you help somebody, they just, they're a fan of yours. And they're like, wow, that was really great. And oh, I'm very gracious for that. And whatever they feel. And, and now mm-hmm. they're a part of your audience, if you will. And so, like, that, that's the piece. If we, if we move too quickly with people, here's, here's the biggest piece. If we, mm-hmm. if we move too quickly through the qualification process, and, and I'll use you as an example, or even, I know Susan on the phone, you know, 
Um, both of you came on to my calls like really early, if not the first one, um, and just show really in great engagement and great interest. And if and if I had like approached, if I had cro I like to say crossed that line, if I had crossed that line and asked you both something, you know, especially when we first met, even though you you both had expressed like, oh, I love this, or you're doing a great job, or you know, that the, the um, the testimonials, if you will, and the positive energy that you were giving back to me about what I was doing and what you enjoyed about it. But if I had crossed that line too early, what would have happened? Like, speak for yourself, Julie. I'm like, if I had broached that line, it's like, hey, have you ever considered working with a mentor coach? Or, hey, you know, would you consider working with me? Or something like that. Right. Um, I think if it was too early, I would have probably shied away from you because um, I wasn't ready, yeah. and I'm still not ready. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I have a certain path and boxes I need to check before I start paying to work with a mentor coach, and mm -hmm. I'm just not there yet. Definitely. And so, see, you would have shied away. Susan, mm -hmm. you there still? Yeah. Um, so, let me ask you. So if I had, because we had some good conversations as well, um, mm -hmm. if I had kind of crossed that line earlier, like what, where would you have been, do you think? Oh, I, you know, I would have been backing up for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's you exactly know, and it. Possibly, and possibly just, you know, dropped off the calls altogether. Yep. Even though it's a different animal we're talking about here, you know. Yeah. Your purpose here is different than getting a client, but had you done that in a conversation, then chances are, you know, maybe I I, I would have thought, okay, well, you know what, this is like those um, webinars that they spent, you know, like 20 minutes giving information and 40 minutes selling. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Exactly. And that's not what I. That's not what I came for. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So that and that's yeah, a, really, a great example. I, I really want to use you two as a great example since you're here. So in other words, if we cross that line too early and we don't spend the time, when I say qualifying, I almost hate using that word because it just sounds so like, you know, like this, this logistical process we have to go through. But it's just, we, we call it what we call it for what it is, you know. And, um, you know, I, I'm not sitting out there, we're not sitting out there just, constantly qualifying people, but it, but for lack of a better term, you know, it's like we're just, we have a barometer on people, and, and we're, we're helping, we're helping, we're helping, but as coaches, we've got to, and as business owners, as entrepreneurs, if we're not aware of that timing, right, obviously, people have a need because they're, they're coming to you, whether they're consuming your information, they're listening to the calls. You both have needs because you're listening to the calls, right? You're attending. You're consuming information. So you have needs. But if we don't pay attention to the barometer, if you will, of, of the timing of their needs and just the, the signs and the clues that people are giving us, um, then we're, gonna, we're not going to get any business or any clients. Um, so we've got to do that. And it doesn't mean that we're right or wrong all the time. It can't be like, oh, what if I'm wrong? If I, you know, if I cross this line, I can never go back, and then I'm going to lose this person. I don't want you to worry about that. It's just more of, you know, like I teach, just build relationships, build relationships. And the cool part about that is, is when, when you build strong relationships and you give, 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 what I found is, is people at that point then will ask. They will come out and ask, and they'll say, hey, listen, you know, I've been following with you for a while. I've been getting emails for a while. I've been blah, blah, blah for a while and I really like blah, 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 I'm at that point where I could use your help. I'm at that point. That's when people actually come out and they, they ask you those things. And it's so much easier when someone comes to you and asks, isn't it? So, yes. but like, it just, it makes, like, then we, we're not selling it at, at that point because it's just like, they're just saying, hey, I want to I buy something. I still go through this all the same process with somebody because I'm like, great, tell me, Tell me more about what you're thinking. Tell me what you're looking for. Why do you want that? Why is now the right timing? I'm still going to go through all that stuff and that nothing changes. I, I never assume just because someone – I've had people, hey, I want to work with you as a coach. Okay, well, that's awesome. Like, well, tell me where you're at and what makes you say that. You know, I just ask all those same questions because you've still got to find out what's going on. Um, and that, that's such an important point. But the biggest thing here is, is crossing that line too early, like, like in some of these instances, 
that's when people, as you two both said, they just back up and or they just disappear. Mm-hmm. That's a, it's a, a telltale sign of us crossing the line too early. Once we, once we broach that line and we, we give them, if you will, the complimentary session and they're really not that qualified, it's, it's like we just sh- that's our bag of tricks. And it's like they saw the magic show, but they really didn't even want to see the magic show, so they weren't impressed at all. And there's no value to it because there's no value in coaching if there's no need or the timing's not there especially, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, what do I need a TV, big screen TV for? But all of a sudden it's a Super Bowl and I'm having 20 people over my house. Oh, my God, that big screen TV. Oh, my God, I really want that now. There's a need for it. Otherwise, it's like, what do I want that monstrosity in my home for? To see the difference? Need and timing. Yeah. And that's it. So that, that line that I'm talking about, I'm, I've been kind of talking about it for a while now, but that's so, so important. And I always just say, stay on the other side of that line and don't go over. And even when they invite you to come over, yeah, you know, I, I would like to learn a little bit more or I would consider working with you as a coach. I don't just walk in at that point. I just say, great. And like I said just a little while ago, well, tell me why that, that's of interest to you. Tell me why you, you think you'd value that right now in your life. And I just kind of make them like basically, do you really want me to come in? Do you really want me to come in your house? And, and then if I do go in, I always, like I said, keep that door open and say, hey, listen, anytime mm-hmm. you want to kick me out, I'm like, you don't have to. Just say go and I'm, I'm gone. It's okay. Mm-hmm. So how, how does that help out specifically Julie? Um, I love that because you're really, um, you're getting them to like step in to their own commitment. Yeah. Like, and really own it before you make a commitment on the line. Absolutely. So let me do this. I know, I know Susan, you had, you had kind of held off on something. What was well, it? I've got something better to talk about now. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh. You so say you changed it. Oh, that was like. <laughs> well, you know what? As I'm listening to this, um, you know, it it, it it occurs to me that, you know, a lot of the time, especially up front, I'm not as in depth with them as I could be, and 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 maybe as I should be, and. Mm-hmm. I love, I, I actually like the term qualifying because it reminds us that we have a very serious purpose here. And it's kind of clinical sounding, but, you know, sometimes, at least for me, I need it to be. The other part of this is one of my favorite books, Fierce Conversation. Susan Scott talks about mining for mineral rights. And what she, that's, what she, that's what her term is. And she, um, what she's really talking about is having deeper conversations, getting below the surface level, really digging deep to get to that golden nugget, yeah. that core of what, you know, what's driving someone or something. The challenge for most people, and this is, this is what sales is, and this is with selling, is with people get all choked up and scared is we can this is what I was for such a long time is we we can let's say we're having these deeper conversations Susan as you say right we're Mm -hmm. getting to know them and if you will we're qualifying them but we're getting to know them and their needs and where they're at and why it's so important to them and so forth and so on we come to a point where we understand it and we see it, mm-hmm. and maybe we feel it. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we feel it. This is the point where it's so vital we understand that we have to make a transition. We have to make a move. If we don't make a move, it, either the conversation is just going to carry on and carry on, and then you're going to be an hour in with somebody. You're going to be – and there's nothing wrong with that, right? right. I mean, spend time right. with people, invest time with people, help them. Um, you just got to know where to cut it off here and there. We're going on and we're going on, but we we know we're not making a move. I just, I just always like to relate it back to dating. It's like right. you know, you're talking to the guy or the girl, and it's just like mm. I don't know. Maybe for a girl, it's like when is this guy gonna kiss me? <laughs> you know, or, or I'm sitting there going like, 
oh my god, I just want to kiss this girl, ask this girl out, you know, and it's like, I just, uh, you know, I get so caught up, I don't know what to say, what to do, you know, and hopefully that, is that a good parallel, <laughs> right? So, I think so. Yeah, but you know what I mean, we get, we got to get to that point where we, we make a transition and make a move to say, yeah. you know, would mm-hmm. you consider this, or it sounds like, I always like to go off of what I'm hearing someone say, because it, it, now it, it what it's how it comes across is is it comes across as the reason I'm asking is because of what I heard you say. The reason I'm asking or bringing this up is not because of my own agenda or what I want. It's because I couldn't help but hear you, you know, saying that you're really moving forward. Right? I couldn't help but I can't help but see that you know you're you're challenged with this, or you really want to move forward with this. And, and based on that, I, I can't help but ask you, you know, would you consider um, working with me as your coach? Would you consider hiring me as your coach? Would you consider working with a coach? You know, is, would, would, is coaching something you're familiar with? Any, you know, any variations. I like to ask it a bunch of different ways. But that's that transition. But, you know, it's, we can ask it in a way that's very, um, you know, like I said, based on what I'm hearing. So it, it, it just comes across as like, oh, I'm considering you. And that, that's a very non-invasive, respectful, if you will, way of making that transition because now it's, we're basing it upon, oh, here's what I heard you say, and we're basing it upon um, a need of theirs. So that's why I say that is like there's those deeper conversations, but then know where that transition is and get a feel for it. And, um, and, and lastly, I'll say this, and I, I want to do a call on this. I'll probably do this next week. But our, our number one objective, um, especially as we're starting off and even within our first year or, uh, of consistently doing something, is we're just looking to build an audience. Like we're looking to build an audience of people that love our information and consume it and, and benefit from it. That's it. That's mm-hmm. all we're trying to do. So like Julie, with those people, mm-hmm. um, like those two uh, speed coaching or, you know, little mini sessions you have, mm-hmm. just qualify them, you know, and, and, you know, make a connection with them. But if you're not getting, like, anything, you know, strong from them where you'd make a transition... Just like you and I on the phone or Susan and I in any interactions we've had, I, I haven't made any transition because it's just like I'm just loving you guys being here and you're loving this and it's like that's it. And that's all we need to do, right? So with those two people, just help them out. Find out what they're And if you're not getting any strong thing, you know, strong like need timing where you want to make a transition, just, you know, make a recommendation on how you can help them. Share some resources with them, ideally some of your own resources. Invite them to um, some, you know, your database, you know, a call you're doing, anything that you're doing or information that you have so that they can become a part of your audience and make them raving fans of you. You can't mm-hmm. make them, but just by doing those things I talk about, they'll become raving fans, right? Mm-hmm. And so now, at, at a minimum, you've just got two more people in your audience. And if, right. you know, if you're going to be selling out a theater <laughs> or a stadium at some point or whatever it is, it's just like, whoa, we've got a lot of seats to fill. It's like, all right, well, who's going to take up these seats? I don't want to drag people in here because they don't want to see the show. They're, they're not going to see the show. But I want people to, to walk in and go, huh, I like this. I'm going I'm to sit down and take a seat. And um, so just... Think about it like that. It's like you're just starting to build your audience. Yeah. That's all. And you don't have to sell them anything. Just help them, help them, help them. And then when they're ready to do something with you, they'll say something to you.